Rishni Gajetan, Gloria Rizzo, Victor Panin, York Milker. The third man inside the ring once the action begins will be from Russia, referee Yuri Kopsev. Ring turn the gate to Yuri Kopsev, receive Federatsasa. This bout is scheduled for 12 rounds for the vacant WBO Intercontinental, vacant WBA Intercontinental, and vacant UBC World Junior Middleweight Championships. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. Arda Tavayan, in the shape of the Zesum, Sonia Kraunthani, in the Zlada, in the shape of Sharshalan, and Kazal Burshdaga, Boxing is dead, Tanis Polling is dead. He steps between the ropes this evening, wearing yellow and black. Class. He weighed in at 60 kilograms, 154 pounds. His record, 34 victories, opposite two defeats, with 28 wins via knockout. Ardaftagayan, Jeke Gersa, Walter Stark Jingas, Onyek, Yonik Shiga Yekeo, Shiga Sapra, Jirma Sigazan, Nakaut Pinching Skajetkan. Fighting out of a crowd, Ghana, Patrick the Poisonous Arrow, Alati. His opponent awaits across the ring and fights out of the blue corner. Arda Tarain, in the share, Bezin Bater, Mazin, Shet Sterms, and Thomas Polizar. He steps between the ropes this evening wearing a white and gold. Arda Tarain, Ach Kirk, Jania Alton, Shorty Gigan. His official weight and identical 68 kilograms, 154 pounds. Salmaka Alpasigas Killer. His professional record flawless at 22 and 0, with 19 wins via knockout. Arda Tarain, Kasvirin, Tejirma, Sigas, Jekpe, Jekot, Kazep, Balanda, Jengis, Kajetian, Untoz, and the Kalp, Pilurgan, Kazak Pauramas. Fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan, Kanak, Kazak, Islam. Not a lot between these guys. Height, weight, reach all the same. Age seven years older is Islam. So we're set to go here. Ten point must scoring system. There's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved at the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight in case of an accidental foul. We go to the scorecards. Remember, we're streaming around the world on www.nelsonspromotions.com. So here Box. we go, round number one. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Bob Alexander. In the white and gold is the Kazakh Islam. Never fought here. He's of Kazakh uh, heritage and blood, but he was born in China. In Western China, not too far from here. And he lives in Pahokee, Florida. Trained by Nelson Lopez Jr. and Sr. Alatoy on the hand, other hand from Accra, Ghana. Very typical Ghanaian fighter. Tremendous physical condition. You can see the cut of the body. And in that feature bob that we had for him at the very top, you could see Islam training the old ways with rocks and horseback, which is big in this part of the world. And running through streams and rocks and throwing rocks. A little old school going on with the training of Kanat Islam. Now this guy, uh, extensive amateur career, 2004 Olympics in Athens, 08 Olympic bronze medalist in uh, Beijing. Host of competition in 2007, and I'm talking world competition in Chicago. 2006 World Cup team competition. Competed in the USA, Azerbaijan, Qatar, and Mongolia. 
He was 8-4 and four in the World Series of Boxing. Then he officially turned pro in September 2012. And of all places, the Dominican Republic, stopping his first 11 pro opponents. He's also stopped his last nine going back to May of 2013. He's won six Latin American titles. This is his second fight this year, and you watch him as a boxer. Well-conditioned, he's got power in both hands. He's got a fine jab, solid body shots. That's all Panet Islam, and they love him here. And this is a big thrill for him to be fighting back home in Kazakhstan for the first time. Some of the fighters that fought previously on the card tonight told me at the weigh-ins yesterday that Kanad Islam as a mentor to them. He also helps in the training, and uh, he's a hero to some of these young fighters. Stop! Stop! He also trains these fighters in uh, Florida, uh, up around the Bahoki area. Alatoy had uh, 50 amateur fights, turned pro in Ghana in December of 06, ran off 30 straight wins to begin his career. But all the three of his fights were in Ghana. Fights outside of Ghana, he's lost. He lost in uh, Zambia and New York when he gets stopped both times. Since then, though, he's 4-0 with four KOs, so he qualifies for this uh, lightly regarded but well-known UBC in certain parts of the world. UBC is big because guys can't qualify for the big four. WBA silver okay, champ, a uh, uh, super champ, I should say, is Iris Lande. Lara. There's the first big body shot of the night, just a few seconds before the bell. So, a lot of really didn't do anything, so I'll have to give that round to uh, Islam. There's the Patrick Alloche, his trainer. Bori Kwisi aside, giving him instructions. Not a lot to choose from in that first round, Colonel. Yeah, I just leaned to Islam because I think he forced the fight. And uh, Alode seemed like he had a deer in the headlights here in Kazakhstan. The Ghanaian, by the way, is a 2009 welterweight champion, 2011 WBC International Silver Welterweight title. That Ghanaian championship was in 209. He defended that title. He won in 2011 uh, several times before losing it in Zambia to Charles Manucci via TKO. As a boxer, the book on Alate, he's aggressive, well conditioned as you can see, and in Ghana, he's seriously a banger. Let's see how he goes here in round number two. Let's see if uh, Kenneth opens up a little bit more. A little bit of nerves for him, too, here in his home territory. You know, we had the fighters listed uh, as the same height, but for the life of me, it looks like he's taller. You see it that way, Bob, or my eyes just... No, I, I agree with you, Colonel. I, I think he looks like at least uh, an inch, maybe two inches taller than it might be. It might be the hair, too, Bob, because he's got the, <laughs> the dark complexion, and, and uh, but he just looks a bit taller. Nice defensive movement by Kanet Islam so far. Alate's going to have to do something to take the play if he has a chance in this fight. He's going to have to land something that's going to make Islam respect him. I don't think there's a lot of respect at this point. There isn't any because of the way Alate throws out his jab. See, he paused with it. He pushes it out. He's a, he doesn't drive off the back leg. Therefore, he has no power with his jab. And any time Islam wants to come through it, he can walk right through it. Remember, Alate has 28 knockouts in his 34 wins, so he actually has more knockouts than Islam has fights. But a uh, different class of fighter altogether. Hard body shot that time by Islam. They hear the reaction of the crowd at any time that Islam does anything. These boxing fans in Kazakhstan love their fighters. I love the discipline by Islam, the way he's going to the body, just like we saw the previous knockout. These Kazakhstan fighters, they know the, uh, the score by going to the body. That leads to the big head shots. Instead of just going to the head, go to the body, wear your guy down, and the knockout will come by itself. Well, all they have to do is take a look at the very best uh, boxer from this part of the world, and that's Triple G, Gennady Golovkin. And that's his style. Good body shot again by Islam. By the way, the other champs, WBC, Jermel Charlo. The IBF is 
Jermall Chalo, his twin brother, and the WBO uh, champion in this uh, junior middleweight division is Canelo Alvarez. Not a bad fighter. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> Yuri Kopsev from Moscow, Russia, is the third man in the ring. Short right hand on the inside, Colonel. Nice shot, he bangs the body. Alode, I don't know, again, it's the, the deer in the headlights, but he's just not doing enough offensively. As I say that, he gets off a right hand. But he's got to set stuff up with his jab as he goes with the right hand lead. Well, he hasn't shown anything that makes Kanat Islam want to pause. He's just going in there and doing his work, and Alate is not getting anything in return as far as power is concerned. Now, what's going to happen is Islam, when he gets fully warmed up, is going to, you know, turn up the heat on this guy. Things are going nice for him. Uh, just barely won the first round. He won the second round convincingly. So he's done what he's had to do. He's won the first two rounds. All right, we're gonna take a look at some of the action in that second round. You can see there's that first big body shot, followed by the left hook. And again, he just keeps going to the body. Tried the right hand there, it was blocked a little bit, but he doesn't forget to finish off the combination by going to the body. That is great discipline, it's very impressive. Gannett not sitting down in between rounds here either, Bob. He's filled with confidence. Well, if you can run around the mountains throwing rocks and uh, <laughs> doing stuff like that in your training, I think standing up in the corner. But when you look at this guy, Elite, yeah. I mean, he's in great physical condition, too. <laughs> All garnered fighters are built just like this. All right, here we go. Round number three. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan, the Bob Alexander. And our staff here, our producer tonight is Ira Glass. We got Z. Glazanov is our stage manager. We appreciate all the help from our people around us in this unusual place to be, but the most wonderful place for boxing in this brand new arena. This place is terrific. You can hear the fans chanting for Kanad Islam in the background. Alani finally gets off a combination of the left uppercut right hand, but he needs to throw a lot more of them. Ducked underneath the wild right hand by Islam that time. Islam just kind of lines him up. Alatoy will slide to his left, and then he'll stop. And Islam will get in front of him and then go right to banging again. Box. Murphy Yuri Kopsev giving uh, hand signals to the fighters. I doubt the Ghanaian speaks Russian, and I don't know if uh, Islam speaks Russian. He probably does. Well, that's the way they do it in international competition. It's all hand signals. No speaking, and it really works. Proud of our referees from the United States, James Waring, former world champion, Tommy Kimmins, a former Army amateur champion, came here from the state of Florida. Big right hand lands. Body shot. Another body shot downstairs by Islam. Islam just lined up in front of him, punch shots down. Right He's really. Hand. Go ahead, Bob. A right hand, left hook to the body. It's one of the best combinations in boxing, and he is using it to perfection in round number three. Islam pretty quick on his uh, feet as well as Alate tried to put some pressure on him, but Alate gets squared up now. Tries to go with the right hand lead from a southpaw position, and that doesn't work because he doesn't seem to have a tremendous amount of power in spite of his knockout record. And here's a hard warning about low blows by a referee, Yuri Kupchev. You hate to see Alate in this uh, then you get any points taken away. Three or four or five hard shots in a row off the hands of Islam, mostly left hands, mostly body shots. Alate landed a quick left hook, but it didn't even phase Kanad Islam. Islam kind of reaches downstairs to try to shake the kid from Ghana up. Kid from Ghana, well trained. He comes from that school of boxing in Akko where the professor Zuman Elson is from one of the Great Hall of Fame world champions. And here's Islam again, loading up shots. Hard body shots. One thing for Alato is he's got his protector very high, and he's lucky he has, because Islam is blasting him to the spleen side and to the liver side. 
as the bell. It's not a loud bell here. The referees have done a great job being able to pick it up tonight. Replay action from round three. You can see Islam opening up on Patrick Alote. Got him in the corner, really working him over. Left hands, right hands to the body. He just keeps going back to the body. Comes back with an uppercut. And Patrick Alote is just helpless on the ropes trying to uh, cover up, much like Ali did many years ago. But he has been taking a bit of a pounding, especially to the body. Sultan uh, Tomatov is our... Uh, Directed tonight, and we thank you, Sultan, for getting those great shots for us. Uh, the replays are terrific and have been all night. And we'll get that in for you if you're doing a super job. All right, we moved to round number four. I've got a shutout so far by Islam. He hasn't won any rounds super big, but he's won them all. We're in round number four. I'm the Colonel Bob Sheldon with Bob Alexander and our entire staff here at. Uh, Nelson's Promotions. I'm glad that you can be with us if you're watching us streaming around the world on Nelson'sPromotions.com. One of the few times that Alate tried to take the lead here, stepped forward with an attempted jab and a right hand, but he missed them both. And right there he goes right back into the corner. This is not going to work for him. Problem with him, Bob, as I said before, is he's, he's short with his jab. He's not really committed. He paused with his jab. You know, nice defense here. See his jab, paw, paw. No snap. All it is is a positioning shot for his right hand. And consequently, Islam has no fear of the jab and is able to walk right into the kill zone. He doesn't even have to be throwing, but he usually is. That's one thing he's got to look out for is the uppercut. And back to the body, hard left hook by Islam to the body of Alate. That's money in the bank for the later rounds, Colonel. When you work that body early on, it tires your opponent out much quicker, and they're not able to keep their hands up to defend, and that's when you can land those big shots to the head that could oh, score a knockout. Headbutt there, and the referee Yuri uh, uh, Kupsev right on top of it. Oh. He goes down and takes a knee after the headbutt, and he calls timeout. I'm not sure where the headbutt caught him, it looks like he caught him right on the nose. He could have given him five minutes, but uh, goes with the right hand lead now. So, left hook. Although that looks like he's got an adrenaline flow now. Trying to throw hard shots, but the upper trunk movement and head movement of Islam is pretty good. But these body shots are tough. And again, if he didn't have that. Uh, protect the high. I'll, uh, the highest I think I ever saw was uh, Lennox Lewis. But uh, he had underneath his armpits. Some uh, refs made him push him down. But I'll tell you this. Alatoy would be taking a lot more punishment if his uh, protector was down a little bit lower. What I like about Islam is he keeps his defense tight and he keeps his punches short. There's very little wasted motion when it comes to Islam. Good body shot again. Get Alatoy backed up in the corner and see if he get one big blast before the end of the round. Hard body shot again. There's the bell. Alatoy cut loose with the left hook, but it didn't land. So another round for Islam. Things are going his way. He's sticking to his game plan, Colonel. He's getting in there with those short punches. Always a combination. You rarely see a guy like Kanat Islam throwing one big punch and then stopping. Everything is combinations. That is an impressive fighter that's been well coached. Nelson Lopez Jr., the trainer in there, has been doing a fabulous job. And you can see it right here on the ropes. There it is. There's a left hook to the body. Missed with the right hand and the left hook, but always you see the combinations. Never one punch at a time. 
working his man over on the ropes. Right hands, left hooks, uppercut. It all comes together. It's just a matter of time before he catches up to him. As you moved around number five here at the brand new Elmany Sports Complex in Elmany, <laughs> Kazakhstan. Our principals in the white trunks with the gold trim is uh, Kanet Islam, the Kazakh, who hasn't spent a lot of time in Kazakhstan except to get ready for this fight. And this is his first fight in Kazakhstan. He lives in Bahoki, Florida in the USA and trains under Nelson Lopez's stable. Nelson Smart. By the way, there is a UBC World Junior Middleweight title on the line for this. In parts of the world, the UBC is very important, especially across Africa and some places in Latin America. But it can get you some recognition in the WBO and the WBA because this is for an Intercontinental Junior Middleweight title and that results in ranking as the world really doesn't know Islam yet, but they're going to. If he continues to put on performances like this, Colonel, the way he's fighting, he's exciting. People enjoy watching him. He's very disciplined. I mean, he sold the house out here, Bob. Yeah, 14,000 people are in here, and they are enjoying every minute of this. Just keeping the pressure on Alatoy. Time the ref warned Alatoy about hanging on. The ref wasn't in position, but he didn't see Alatoy come up with a knee as well. And the ref can only call what he sees. And uh, Alatoy got away with that. Alatoy doesn't look crisp or sharp in his punches at all. And conversely, Islam is very sharp with his. Alatoy trying to turn this into a sloppy fight. Almost a survival mode. Every once in a while he unleashes something, but look at. These are hard, crisp punches now from this line. Short, crisp right hand right on the button. Alate may be a little bit hurt. There's a stiff jab. See, there's the difference between Alate's jab and uh, Islam's jab. Heads came together again. And that's going to happen because Islam has his head forward when he comes in. He's got some bruising underneath his right eye and his left eye. But a lot of that has to do with the physical structure of the head of people of this nationality. I'm a big believer in body language, Colonel, and I'll tell you what, looking at Alate, he just looks like he's defeated right now. He looks like he doesn't know how to attack this machine that's coming after him, hitting him with the body, hitting him to the head. He just looks totally, totally frustrated. Well, it's at the point where Islam, uh, you know, because of the lack of the jab of Alode, just comes in and boards down a nice block by that right hand. He parried that hard shot. Now he shifts around with his right shoulder forward and blasts him with a left hand. Again, he does it from the southpaw stand. So Islam is five for five on my score sheet. Alate is game, but uh, he has he has not won a minute of this fight so far. He's going to have to do something really dramatic to turn things around at this point. And you look at him in the corner, sagging kind of on the rope. Cornerman trying to encourage him. Taking a look at some of the action in that last round, you see the look on the face of Alate. It's just it's discouraging. And then you see the body attack. You see the short punches. You don't get as tired when you're throwing those short punches as opposed to when you see those big, long, looping punches. Beautiful short right hand in there by Kanat Islam. You know, as we get ready to move to round number six here in the Elmany Sports Complex, you wonder how much more can Alate take? Because he's taken a lot of shots to the head as well as a very hard body shot. So here we go. Round number six, the Colonel Bob Sheridan along with Bob Alexander. Glad wherever you're watching around the world, they're enjoying our fights tonight. Nelson Lopez done a great job in his promotional company here. Our principal's in there. Kenneth the Kazakh Islam, 22-0, 19 KOs. Looks to be another terrific fighter from this part of the world against Patrick Alatoy. 
who is as tough as they come in great physical condition, but things aren't going his way. Well, they call him the poison of arrow, but I think uh, he needs to uh, get a bow and arrow is about the only chance he has at this point maybe to land something on Kanat Islam. It just isn't working for him. Everything he tries, there was a short, crisp right hand, but again, no power behind it, Colonel. It's all arm punches for Alatel. Well, Islam is, a, is, you know, just through the and into the sixth round, you can see he's a class above uh, Alote. I mean, as I look at Kanet Islam, he's a world-class fighter. He's got some things to learn, but he is world-class ability. Alote is pure hot. What he lacks in ability, he picks up in conditioning. But his jab is weak. He doesn't have a big, powerful shot. He closes the kill zone with a weak jab. And they caught him with a decent uh, uppercut. But it didn't move. And Kenneth Eslam just keeps coming forward. I don't care. It was like a, a swatting a fly away with a, a fly swatter. And no question about the toughness of Islam. He can fight right back down to that body again. And the difference between these two fighters, you look at the combinations that are being thrown by Kanat Islam opposed to Patrick Alate, no combinations whatsoever. Calling with the jab, every once in a while he'll try a big right hand, but you don't see a left hook right hand. You don't see a left hook to the body in a right hand. It's all one punch at a time with him. And that's a problem, a real problem for him because his arm throws punches in bunches, as they say. Takes a deep breath, moves in, he wants to turn it up a bit, hang the left hand low. With enough hand speed to get it back up. A lot of head shots being taken there by other guys. And to go along with the body shots. It's a good thing he put in the time to get that body in condition for Patrick. Because a body less odd than his couldn't stand up to this kind of punishment. We're in the sixth round. There's a long time to go. This is at the championship distance of 12 rounds. Look at the face of Patrick Alice. You just see, you see discouragement, you see confusion. He just doesn't have an answer. He doesn't have a plan B, Bob. You're absolutely right. As the belly of the music. You see part of the crowd. In the hometown of Kanat Islam. Enjoying the action here. They packed the house. They've given a lot of support to the home fighters that have already won earlier tonight on the card. Here we go with some replay action. You see the stalking, menacing. They're not Islam there. So those short punches, and they're in bunches, as the colonel said. Combinations. Short, quick right hand by Alice, but nothing on it. It didn't move to not Islam. Even that replay showed how much Alatoy misses. I mean, he threw two or three during that, that one replay sequence, and he missed them all. Where Kanet uh, Islam, you know, he threw maybe ten punches in the sequence and landed about seven. So we move to round number seven. Let's see if Islam wants to pick it up and try to take this guy out of here now. How much more Alatoy can take to the body. Again, he came here in tremendous physical condition as all Ghanaian fighters are in. If you look at the body of Islam, it doesn't sparkle like the body of Alatoy, but that has to do with skin complexion. Just short. Just misses with his punches. By the way, the Russian referee, uh, Yuri Kupsev, is doing a fine job here. He's out of Moscow. You know what they say about a great referee? You don't see him very much. He's out of the action. He's not interfering. Well, there's very few tie-ups for these guys. Which has led to a more action fight. A lot of a little burst of energy here for about 10, 20 seconds and see if he can put anything together. With all his burst of energy, what landed, Bob? Basically nothing. Basically nothing, yeah. He attempted those punches, but very short and very wide on his big punches. Right back comes Islam. And watch him sit down. He goes downstairs, upstairs, hard to the body, hard back upstairs, just graze the chin. He doesn't need to be switching back and forth from southpaw to right-handed. 
Just stay in his orthodox position, and he can handle this guy fine. Now you can count on one hand the number of great fighters that are, were able to shift from left to right during a fight. And it's not really uh, the best choice of uh, plan of attack. One of the best I've ever seen at is Terrence Crawford. But he trains both ways. He can go a full 12 round southpaw or right handed. He's the best I've ever seen at it. And certainly in the recent years. I put marvelous Marvin Hagler on that short list too. He was pretty good at it himself. Yeah, he could switch the right hand, but he was a natural southpaw. Oh, hard right hand landed by Alatoy, and it gives him a little injection of uh, a bit of enthusiasm. The straight right hand gets through. But Alatoy's not sitting down on his punches. I don't know if it's because his legs are weaker, because of all those body shots, but he's not getting anything off that's going to really discourage Kanad Islam. Islam has been able to shake everything off not take a step backward and if you're you know you go into the mind of patrick alate you got to think he's asking himself what more can i do to shake this guy up well when we have a little wider shot take a look at right Marcos. there you can see the spindly legs of alate in comparison to the pretty good caps on islam and that's where the power comes from alate sticky right hand lead catches him up on the ear a better round for alate but he doesn't win the round because of no power behind his shots. Die. Professional boxing is about the hurt business. Kanat Islam has been well-schooled, very disciplined, sticking to his game plan, and there you see a very tired and discouraged Patrick Alize. Doesn't help any either, Bob, when they have his arms up on the ropes. They need to pull those hands down. Let the blood flow down from the heart instead of making the blood up up. There you see Nelson Lopez Jr., head trainer, doing a great job. And here's more evidence of what we've been talking about. Look at those short punches. Even if none of them land, there's a, there's a fairly decent right hand by Alice. But it really did nothing to shake off the attack of Kanat Islam. He is just relentless coming forward using angles, but I love how he doesn't have a lot of wasted motion. That's what keeps you fresh during a fight. When you're not throwing those big looping punches, it's all combination. I didn't think he won the round, but if any round that Elatoy could have won, some of the judges might have given him the seventh round. I, I don't agree with it, but uh, I'm not an official judge. He was competitive in that round. You can say that for sure, but winning it, nah. It's all Islam here. As Islam goes to the body, Downstairs, upstairs, sets up. He's up on his toes. Alatoy, wait, 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 wait. Then he throws out a jab that's nowhere. And it's kind of the way he's fought the fight. He's hoping to land something with power with that right hand. And occasionally he has, like just then, but it doesn't shift Islam at all. He told me at the weigh-in yesterday that his boxing hero is Mike Tyson, but he hasn't been able to get anything off as far as power shots like Iron Mike used to. Well, in the early part of Mike's career, he was a relentless power puncher. I mean, he'd, he'd been down almost to the floor like a Cornell Whitaker and come with his uppercut to get more leverage on guys. And Kevin Rooney was always on him to go to the body more. Rooney always wanted Tyson to keep going to the body, even when he knocked out Marvis Fraser in 15 seconds. He said, oh, he should have gone to the body more. <laughs> look at the look on the face, Colonel of Kanat Islam. He's having fun in there. He's enjoying it. He feels confident, and he knows he's got this fight in hand as long as he sticks to his game plan. Well, he's boxing perfectly. He's winning every round. Well, they're about every round, a nice score sheet. We're in the eighth round. Cracked him with a pretty good right hand. Neither fighter has been down. Neither fighter has been shaken. Nobody's been cut. Heavier blows have been landed throughout the fight by Kanat Islam. Including this series. You can hear the crowd. They sense that maybe this is the time that Islam goes for the kill. This goes to the conditioning of Alatay. Uh, Alatay, I should say. He, uh... He's a tough kid. He's not doing too well offensively, and 
He's taking a lot of punishment, but by golly, he's some kind of tough. Tough and determined, but again, the physical answer is just not there. So far, it hasn't been there. It starts with the jab, Bob. Yes. His right-hand lead has been semi-successful, whether he throws it straight like that or hooking like that with his left hand, but he's very inaccurate. The other guy, you know, whether he throws hard punches or softer punches, he's on the target. And as I say that, the right eye of uh, Islam is starting to close up a little bit. A lot of that has to do with the structure of the skull of people in this part of the world. Put that in the book for Islam as well. I'll tell you what, even as tired as Alate looks right now, not Islam looked like he was breathing a little bit heavy right toward the end of that round. He actually threw a couple of looping punches for the first time tonight. Neither one of them landed, and that's the sign of a guy that may be getting a little bit tired himself. Well, it's about time. I mean, he's had an offensive horse the whole time, throwing a ton of punches. We're coming in the ninth round, and he's getting bopped in a share of times. But uh, Alote has been hit a lot more, a lot harder, a lot harder. So Kenneth Islam, who gets guys out of here usually earlier than this, goes to the ninth round here. Time has been called. Looks like. Uh, Diamond. Ref just wants to get the Box. trunks up a little bit higher. So here we go. Time back in here in the ninth round. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Bob Alexander. Our principals, Kenneth Islam. I have him unofficially pitching a shutout 80-72, which would mean in this stage of the fight, Patrick Alote would need to score a knockout to win. I don't see him having that kind of power with the conditioning of Islam. But I've seen a lot of strange happenings over the years one shot can turn a fight completely around we've seen it so many times it could still happen he's still <laughs> got that good right hand if he can land a tie but there come out Islam on the attack and here come the combination big body shot said Bob stop stop don't call it Box. action back in around nine Alito felt that body shot because very few times in the fight as he tried to hang on. And he's in survival mode right now. He stops, plants, throws, throws again. But he's fatigued, and with that fatigue comes an accuracy. No balance on Patrick Alote right now. He's, he's trying to bounce and move with his legs, stop, but stop, there's just stop, no balance stop. for him to set his Don't feet call. so he can do something Box. to get Kanad Islam off him. Referee warns a lot of about hanging on. Cordell, I kind of feel bad for him because he came here in such great physical condition. He came to fight and he's absorbed a lot of punishment, but he hasn't been able to deal out too much punishment. Well, and again, those body punches that Islam has been landing, starting from the very first round, the old saying, it's money in the bank. If you're going a 12-round fight, you throw those kind of body punches early in the fight, and you have exactly what we're seeing here now with Patrick Alate. His legs are weak, and he cannot land any hard power punches because he has no strength left. And his Islam, conversely speaking, light jab, light jab. He's lining up the right hand. Now he'll back, try to go with the left hook to the body. He fainted, there's the left hook. And now he switches to southpaw, which is, is crazy because you lose power when you do that. He's got no power in his got no power in his punches when he shifts to southpaw. Sometimes with some fighters, Bob, it makes them just feel a little bit more loose when they switch, but it doesn't ever help them any. Well, they might think that it's something that's going to confuse the opponent, but if you're winning with what you're doing, why switch? Well, he's had a very successful run into the ninth round. He doesn't need to change anything. Well, it's a, a, a very low punch that was right on the borderline. Another one. But, but no again, warning. again, Bob, that uh, protect is very high, so the ref's letting him off the hook, and I understand that. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, you see in round 10, the ring card girl holding it up, and that means we're heading into the championship rounds, the last three rounds, and that's where you find out who wants to be a green belt champion at the end of this fight. Here we go with some action from the ninth round. There's a sharp right hand right down the pike by Kanad Islam. He follows it up to the body, always follows it up to the body. Right hand again. Comes in with the hook to the body, hook to the head, then comes the right hand. Beautiful combination. That is textbook stuff. That is what you teach your fighter in the gym. And so often, for some reason, a lot of these fighters, they just let it go when they get into the ring, and it's all one punch. And a kind of like they've seen from Alitor. No combination. Well, it's championship time now as we move to the 10th round. It took a little extra time in the corner, and then the Yuri Cubs uh, said, uh, get out of here. And there's Islam right on top of uh, Alatoy, picking up where he left off in the ninth. Again, it would take a knockout for Alatoy to win this fight. Alatoy has been game, but he hasn't been able to really hit Islam with really, really hard punches. His jab has been soft, it's been blocked a lot, just like that. A little more pep in his jab coming out here in the 10th round. But again, it's just one punch at a time. Nothing comes behind it. Bobby, he had the pep behind it all right, but, you know, good jab gets through the gloves. He's, his jab is being smothered in the gloves of Islam. I think if I was Patrick Alatoy's trainer, I would uh, I'd take out an old tape of Larry Holmes and say, this is how you throw a jab. Well, it's too late for that now. He's <laughs> Larry Holmes. Larry, of course, had one of the great jabs in the history of heavyweight boxing and all boxing. Never forget him knocking down Ozzy Ocasio with a jab. How often did you ever see that in boxing? Jaws Ocasio, he was something else. <laughs> And he was a biter before it became fashionable. With, uh, <laughs> I remember Mike. that. <laughs> this one, very patient here. He's selective with his punches, and his punches are pinpoint when he throws them. You see, everything that he throws, are, a very high percentage of his punches are landing. Pat, on the other hand, is throwing you know, fewer punches and fewer percentage of landing. And body shots again. Well, at this point, Colonel, I think that Kanad Islam certainly would be happy if he was able to get a knockout, but I think he'd be just as happy if he goes to full 12. It's so much of a psychological thing when you go 12 rounds, you know you can do it. You hear the crowd booing the uh, warning from a referee. But the fact of the matter is there's actually warning a lot of Rare combination there by Patrick Alate. Didn't land much, but at least he's finally throwing his hands with more bad intentions, as they say, trying to get more punches off stop, in a stop. combination where you see Alate going down. That's a slip and a push. Right. And the ref right on top of it. Good job. Victor Calhoun, by the way, the president of the UBC, is here to supervise his championship fight. Hard body shots. Look at this. Back. Boy, that's how you finish up a round with a great combination like that. Nice finish to the round. Tenor in the books, and I got a shutout by Islam. 100 to 90. More of the crowd here at this beautiful arena in. Almaty, Kazakhstan. There is the Kazakh, Kanat Islam. Here's some action from that 10th round. You see him coming in like a bull and letting both hands go to the head and to the body. This is just textbook boxing. Doesn't always have to be the Ali jab. You can be a textbook boxer by planting your punches specifically, targeting good spots in the body, both to the body and the head. But the way he throws with the short punches, not wasting a lot of motion, that is great boxing. Stop, stop, stop. 
Referee calling timeout here. Wants to get the water cleaned up in the corner. Oh, it's a river there in the corner <laughs> of uh, Patrick. Good job again by the ref spotting that. Anybody Come going in. there, they could break an ankle. Box. Absolutely. All right, here we go now. Time back in in the 11th round. The Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Bob Alexander, our principal's Kanet Islam from Kazakhstan, living in the United States, having a field day. And here's Alati trying to show what a condition aggressive fighter he can be. That's, that's about as much action in one time that we've seen from Patrick Alate. All of a sudden, he looks a little bit rejuvenated. Again, his punches are not landing with the effect that it would hurt Kanat uh, Islam. But at this point, because he's throwing more punches than he has in the entire fight, Islam has backed off just a little bit. Well, he goes with that right hand lead that's been successful for him, but he still hasn't had a lot of power. So the people stop the camp. Uh, Kanat Islam try to get him fired up here. In the, we're in the 11th round. And he's won every single round. Maybe one round I could have given to Alate, but uh, it's not enough. What's that old saying? They gave him a round because he showed up. <laughs> and he signed his name, huh? There you go with the combinations again, Colonel. Inside, short, crisp punches, no wasted motion. He is a machine. Just been a nice pressure fight all the way for Islam, the Cossack. Fighting in Kazakhstan for the first time. Born in China, not too far from here. We're right on the border of China. Big right hand there, Colonel. And he's kind of enjoying it, is Islam. Remember, nobody's been down and nobody's really been shaken in this fight. A couple times, Alate looked like he might be have some rubber in his legs, but he's recovered, and that's from being in tremendous physical condition that he said throughout the broadcast. Well, if he wasn't in this kind of shape, he wouldn't be here now. But he's, he's just a class below uh, Kanet Islam. Islam's world class all the way. And Patrick is a guy that will fight for all of his Leicester titles. I mentioned earlier, Alate is a huge fan of Mike Tyson. So is Kanet Islam. His favorite fighter is Mike Tyson and Bebut Shumanov. Don't push. Well, Beboot won his first title in the Kevin Barry a few years ago. Then he moved up in weight, and he still holds a light heavyweight title right now, Beboot. Pushed him down, still knocked down. But that's the weak legs, though, Bob. Referee right on top of it. Yeah. His legs are weak right now. I don't know much more he can take. Well, he's going to try and get through this round and make it through the 12th round, but... There's just very little left in the tank for Alate because of those body punches. Look at his legs, Bob. They're yep. really loose in the knee, heavy in the heels right now. He's as game as they come. I give this kid tremendous credit. A tough, tough fighter. But this is not his night. The bell finally ends the 11th round. Mercifully. Yeah, you got to give Alate a lot of credit coming all the way from Ghana, Africa, into the hometown, into the lion's den, as they say, of Kanat Islam. This 14,000-plus crowd here all cheering. That's hard to do psychologically. A lot of great fighters can get through it because they're able to block out the crowd and focus on their game plan. But uh, Alate has been game, but he has just not been able to do anything that put any kind of a hurt or any kind of uh, anxiety on Kanad Islam. This one has uh, been everything he's wanted to do all night long. There's been no deviation from his game plan. You know, if I were this corner, Bob, I don't know if I'd send this guy out for the 12th round. This is where we are, the Almaty Arena. It's called the Almaty Sports Complex. There's all kinds of facilities around here. Beautiful place, the Colonel Bob Sheridan here with Bob Alexander. We're ready for the 12th and final round here. It's an absolute shutout for Kanet Islam against Patrick Alote from Ghana. And again, Colonel, I think we're gonna get time called here, or we might at some point, because there's a tremendous amount of water in Alote's corner. Well, they gave him a shower in between rounds. <laughs> but it's not too late for somebody to get an injured leg. 
Now here's Islam putting some pressure on. He would love to take Alate out. Look at how tough this Alate is. Comes right back. He's been hammered from pillar to post in this fight. Again, nobody's been down. Alate was out on his feet in the last 15 seconds of the 11th round. And you know something? I admire Islam for his ability, and I certainly admire Patrick Alate for his courage. You see Kanad Islam, as you said, Colonel, he'd love to take him out, but even if he doesn't, he's going to make a statement in this 12th round that he's in condition, that he can stick to his game plan, he can continue to throw the body punches and the short combinations, and I think the crowd will be happy even if it goes to 12 rounds. Well, it's a perfect shutout. I've got it 110 to 99 going to this round, and with all likelihood, it'll end up 121 away. Body punches again, a back up to the head. It just doesn't stop. Just relentless has Islam been throughout the course of the fight. Lines up again. Alote trying to hang in there as best he can. Puts out a little offense and again, the weak legs. Yeah, he tried a big right hand, going for broke, swinging for the fences, throwing the Hail Mary, say what you will. And he just bumped the hips, and the referee doing a fine job of realizing there was no knockdown. Nobody's been down in the fight, although Alito has been in the canvas twice because of situations like that, where his legs are just so weak at this stage of the fight. But again, you see the patience, the determination, and the discipline of Kanat Islam. I don't know that a lot of junior middleweights in the world are going to want to get in the ring with this guy anytime soon. Inside of 40 seconds to go in this fight, and Islam keeps firing. He'd love to stop him if he can. But you got to understand the fatigue that he's feeling as well. But he still wants to make that statement. He still wants to close the show and let everybody know that he won this fight convincingly Stop. and totally. Ref coach says he's going to hang on, but he's just got nothing, Stop. absolutely Stop. nothing left. It's, he's physically spent. If I was a ref, he'd stop the fight right now. Well, if he had to go one more round, Colonel, I don't think he could. No, he's totally spent. Look at he's still wing shots. Somehow, brother, he's able to get up on his toes again, but all he's doing is catching. Well, it looks like he'll survive. He paid for it. Oh, he paid heavily for it. He'll know he was in a prize fight tomorrow. I'll tell you, I give a lot of credit to Alize, but Islam is a cut above him. There you see Kanat Islam, obviously very pleased with his performance. Again, Bob, I scored a 121 away. Yeah, I'd, I'd, every single round. I'd be surprised to see much deviation from that from our three judges. Well, it's going to be a unanimous decision. It's just a question of how unanimous it will be. And Kanat Islam is going to go home with a lot of hardware tonight. If the uh, scores are what we believe they're going to be, uh, they can't be anything but what we have. He's going to get the WBO and WBA into Continental Junior Middleweight belts plus the UBC Junior Middleweight Championship of the World. So it picks up a world title, although it's a minor one, and just starts the road towards the big four. It was a one-sided fight to be sure, but you, you had to admire so much the courage of Patrick Alate. It made an, an interesting fight to watch because he was so tough. He was in such great condition. Bob, how are you on for the last two rounds? Credit to him, the sport of boxing, his conditioning, and no quit. Might have been his corner, I'd have stopped it probably after the ninth round. He had nothing to prove, he'd already shown his grit. Boy, I love the sportsmanship in the sport of professional boxing. You see these guys batter each other around with hard shots for 12 rounds. When that final bell rings, they're hugging each other, complimenting each other. That's just great stuff. That's part of what makes boxing so great. Well, it was a good show all in all. We had a first round knockout. That was uh, Aline Canuli knocked out Milton Nunez. 
And then in our first fight, Turov had a fourth round to KO over Isaac Gary. And then this here, one, look at this one. Here we see some of the final round action and look at the combination throwing him just as crisply and powerfully as he did in the first round. He did that for all 12 rounds. There was a point maybe in the seventh round where he stopped for a moment and Alate came back, landed a few shots of his own. But again, that was the uh, end of the rally, as they say. It was all Kanad Islam from that point on to the end. All in all, a very successful promotion here. We're very happy to be here, coming all the way uh, from the United States. Great group of uh, officials and uh, folks coming over representing the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame. Referee Tommy Kimmins and James Waring, Rick Bays and Don Ballas, two great judges. The uh, greatest play-by-play, -play, blow-by-blow broadcaster, I think, in the uh, world. Colonel Bob Sheridan, also in the Florida Boxing Hall of Fame. I'm honored to be in the Hall of Fame myself. And our fine producer, Ira Glass, just inducted this year in the class of 2016. We are all so proud to come over here to Kazakhstan on what we were calling the Florida Goodwill Tour. And we're honored to be here, and it's been a lot of fun. Again, our director tonight, Soltan Domatov. Our stage man, good season, Glasnov. There you see, not Islam having his gloves removed, just waiting for the official word. And there's a great shot of this huge crowd in this beautiful new arena. Another thing that uh, we can take back home to America, the very first event in this beautiful arena is tonight's boxing, and we were proud to be part of it. There you see Nelson Lopez Sr., the president of Nelson's Promotions. His son, Nelson Jr., the chief trainer of Kanat Islam. Everything went their way tonight. Well, all we have to do now is have the uh, ring the announcers make the announcement and make it official. Here's Mike Markham. Let's see if he can get up there. I don't know if you can see us from where we are. <laughs> There's a lot of people in that ring. Bob, you've cued him about 20 times. I think you're going to have to yell at him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards for the decision. So the man, Hardak Tagayan, one year ago, round tanking, Turish Lerimas, then Sheshima Dayan. After 12 rounds of action, Gloria Rizzo scores this bout 117-111. Victor Panin scores the bout 116-112. Jorgen Milica also scores this bout 116-112. Jis one alta, Jis one yaka. Your winner by unanimous decision, and now WBO Intercontinental, WBA Intercontinental, and UBC Intercontinental Junior Middleweight Champion, Kanad the Kaza. And that Islam, unanimous decision victory. The important thing is, the panel of judges got it absolutely right. A unanimous